different about, about this effort uh, is the fact that before it is uh, finalized, there will be an exposure draft and will allow sufficient time for, for, for feedback. So, so what we've challenged the technical committee to come up with is first an exposure draft, which will then be exposed to the public and all those who will be affected by it will have a chance uh, to, 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 and all views and so on will be taken into, into account and reflected in a final code that will, you know, that will be released hopefully not too long after the exposure draft has been uh, released. Um, like I also said in my uh, address, the first, we're going to do it in phases. Like the first time when we did all three codes at the same time, the first, this code, this first effort will be focused on the corporate sector, what I call the large corporates and the former corporates. Subsequent effort will then address the public sector, and then the last sector we'll look at will be the not-for-profit sector. But so this effort is going to be focused on corporates. And uh, by corporates, we mean those entities that are formally organized, whether Nigerian or international, uh, whether uh, government-owned or private-owned, that engage in commercial activities. You know, so, and uh, we're going to try and make it cover what we might define as public interest entities. That is, entities in which the public has an interest in their well-being because their activities impact the general public, either on account of their size, on account of their scale, on account of their reach, or on account of the products or services they provide and how important those products or services are to the running of a, of a modern economy. Those will be public interest economy uh, entities. Uh, other public interest entities could include those who are doing substantial business with, with the public. You know, if you are building, you know, boards are building hospitals or building railway lines and so on. I mean, you need to be organized to the point that at least the public needs to know how the, the companies that, that are doing that are organized and so on. So again, we are going to leave it to the technical committee to define the coverage of this particular first phase of the effort. There's a code for banking, there's a code for insurance, there's a code for you know, the pension industry, there's a code for you know, listed companies, and I think there's a code for SEC. I think there's a SEC code. So there are all kinds of codes out there. And one of the things we're going to look at in coming up with a, a national code, should the national code supersede or complement? We don't know. I don't have an answer. That is the work of this technical committee. We'll have some clarity by the time they are done as to the interrelationships between the sectoral codes and the national code. But one of the things we would like to do is to make sure we reduce overlaps, we reduce duplications, we reduce conflict, where there are conflicting uh, provisions in those codes and so on. But I imagine, of course, that as part of the process to, um, um, to do the national code, all those sectors that already have their own codes are represented on the committee. So if you look at the membership of the committee, all the sectors that already have sectoral codes have members on this code that are coming up with the national code. And the people that we put on the committee are not necessarily representatives of the, of the sectors or the organization they represent. They are people that play active roles in the formulation of those sectoral codes. So, so that they can bring their sectoral perspectives to the discussion, the deliberation we're talking about the national code. So hopefully at the end of the day, we'll get some harmony between the various codes.